Okay, so right now we're focusing on linear equations. Remember, a linear equation or a linear function, because we can use equation and function, um, either one, they mean the same thing, is just gonna be a function who, once you graph it, we get this straight line. Um, the reason we get a straight line is because we're going to have a constant slope, which we'll um, talk about more in another video. Um, but right now what we wanna focus on is what our x and y intercepts and how do we find them so as you can see here I have a nice graph for you guys um, depending on what kind of printer you may have printed these notes out on if you did you may or may not have color-coded lines um, but I have my x and y axis of course my x axis here and my y axis here and notice that within my x and y axis I have one two three I have four different equations here so a y intercept is going to be any point where a graph crosses the y axis so if I start tracing my y axis this point here is going to be the y-intercept of my purple line. As I continue down, this point here will be the y-intercept of my blue line and further down the y-intercept of my green line. Very similarly, with my x-intercepts, it's going to be the point where I cross the x-axis. So again, if I were to trace the x-axis, here is the x-intercept of my red line, of my purple line, and of my blue line. Um, notice that every single uh, equation or every single line is going to have both an x and y intercept. As you can see, if I have a vertical like the red line here or a horizontal like the green line, that notice that vertical lines are only going to have an x intercept. That's going to become very important later. And green lines are only going to have y intercepts. So moving on, if I look at, if I go ahead, our goal is going to be able is going to be to find these x and y intercepts. Oftentimes, they can be helpful in graphing an equation. Um, so, before I talk about how to find x and y intercepts, I'm going to go ahead and label all of my x and y intercepts. So, I'm going to label them as x comma y. So, let's see. I have on my purple line here. It looks like I go over none because it's always the point x comma y. We always got to remember that. So, I go over zero and I go up two. So it looks like I have the point zero 02 as my y-intercept on the purple line and the y-intercept on the blue line. Again, I go over zero and I go up one. And on the green line, I go over zero and this time I go down one, two, three, four. So I'll have zero, negative four. I'm trying to make my negative a little bit darker and I think I just made it look worse. So that is zero, negative four, sorry about that. Um, so if I look at all of my y-intercepts, notice that all my y-intercepts have something in common. Well, every single y-intercept, when I look at the point, has an x value of 0. If I look at my x-intercepts, I have this x-intercept here where I go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, back 5, and I go up none. I go up 0. Here, I go back 1, 2, 3, and up 0. And here, I go forward um, looks to be about 1.5 and I go up 0. So notice that every single one of my x-intercepts also have something in common. They have a y value of 0. That is incredibly important when it comes to finding an xy intercepts. So if I'm going to move this up, this should probably stay on your page because this should be on one page for you. So if I want to talk about how do I find an x-intercept, I am going to use the fact, let's see if I can't keep that on there a little bit, I'm going to use the fact that every single x-intercept has a y value of 0. So to find an x-intercept, here's what I'm going to do. If I know that y is 0, if I know I'm on the x-intercept and I'm not going up or down anything, well, I'm going to use that and I'm going to go ahead and plug 0 in for y. Because even though I'm not going to be explicitly told, hey, y equals zero, I'm going to use my knowledge of what a graph looks like and what a y-intercept is to know that my y-intercept is zero. Or excuse me, my y-value is zero. Now, that I, once I plug my zero in for my y-value, then I can go ahead and solve for x. Because remember, with our linear equations, we're only going to have an x and a y variable. We're only dealing in two dimension right now, only two variables. The nice thing about x and y intercepts is if you get this down now, when we move into different types of equations, for example, exponential equations, quadratic equations, logarithmic equations, trigonometric equations, this does not change. Okay? This is always true of an x-intercept and how you solve for an x-intercept. 
Uh, similarly for a y-intercept, again, I'm going to use the fact that the x is 0 and y-intercepts. So if x equals 0, I'm going to go ahead and plug 0 in for x. Once I plug 0 in for x, that's going to allow me to solve for y. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and write them as a point. Um, so let's look at a couple examples here. I have two examples. So for each example, we're going to find all our intercepts. So in other words, both x and y. So let's go ahead and start with example one. Let's go ahead and solve for that x-intercept. So if I want to find the x-intercept, if I'm crossing the x-axis, that means I haven't gone up or down at all. So y equals 0. So since I know that y equals 0, my equation is going to become 0 minus 5 equals negative 3x. Well, 0 minus 5 is negative 5. Well, if I want to solve this for x, I can divide both sides by negative 3. My negative 3's cancel, and I get x equals, remember, a negative over a negative is like a negative divided by a negative, and I know a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So the point that is my x-intercept is the point 5 over 3, comma 0, because x is 5 over 3 when y is 0. Now I'm going to go ahead on this same problem, and I'm going to go ahead and find my y-intercept. Or excuse, uh, yes, my y-intercept. I just found my x-intercept. So solving for my y-intercept, then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, for my y-intercept. So here, let's do this. Maybe before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and label this as my x-intercept. Okay, to find my y-intercept, then I'm going to go ahead and let x equal zero because if I'm on the y-axis, I go left or right, nothing. So x equals 0, so then I have my equation becomes y minus 5 equals negative 3 times 0. Well, negative 3 times 0 is, of course, just 0. So y subtract 5 equals 0. So to get y by itself, I'm going to go ahead and add 5, giving me y equals 5. So as a point, when is y 5? y is 5 when x was 0, and that is my y-intercept. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for example two. If you feel like this makes sense and you feel like you've got it, go ahead and stop here. Um, if you want to see another example, please watch example two. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on example two. Um, also, example two would be a good one for you to pause and try on your own. If you want to just make sure that you've got it, you want that, um, that kind of reassurance. Um, so going ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and first go ahead and solve for my x-intercept once again. And I know that if I'm solving for my x-intercept, that means y equals 0 because, again, if I'm on this x-axis, I've gone up or down nothing. So if y is 0, I have 3x minus 4 times 0 plus 15 equals 0. Well, this 4 times 0 here is going to go away. 4 times 0 is 0, and 3x minus nothing is 3x still. So I'm going to have 3x plus 15 equals 0. Well, how do I solve a linear equation? I start by subtracting 15 from both sides. I then divide by 3. Negative 15 divided by 3 is negative 5. So for my x-intercept, I have the point negative 5 comma 0 because x equaled negative 5 when y equaled 0. Solving then for my y-intercept, well, with y-intercepts, if I'm now on the y-axis, I've gone left or right, nothing, so x equals 0. Plugging that in, I get 3 times 0 minus 4y plus 15 equals 0. Again, 3 times 0 is nothing. Remember that negative belongs to the 4, so I get negative 4y plus 15 equals 0. I can start by subtracting 15 from both sides. After I've subtracted 15 from both sides, now I can go ahead and divide by negative 4. Those cancel, and I get y equals a negative divided by negative becomes a positive 15 over 4. I'm so comfortable with fractions, so I'm going to leave it as a fraction. So what is my y-intercept? Well, when x was 0, y was 15 over 4. And there are my x and y-intercepts. If it helps, please draw yourself a little picture to visualize, okay, what do I plug the zero in for? Oh, that's right. If I'm on the x-axis, I've gone up or down on the y-axis, nothing, so y is zero. If I'm on the y-axis, if I'm intercepting the y-axis, then I've gone left or right, nothing, and so x is zero.